2023 marks the 100th anniversary of the awarding of Canada's first Nobel Prize, and that's the 1923 Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine awarded not to Banting and Best, but in fact to Banting and John McLeod, the overseer of the project. When Banting is a, finds out he has to share the Nobel with McLeod, quote, Stockholm, go to hell, and he tries to refuse uh, the prize. The refusal lasts for part of a day. He's told he has no choice but to accept. He is the first person associated with the University of Toronto to win a Nobel Prize. He's the first Canadian to win a Nobel Prize. And at age 31, for discovery made at age 29, he's the youngest to win any of the Nobel Prizes. And to this day, is still the youngest to have won it in physiology or medicine. What Bandy says, though, when he accepts the prize is, I'm sending a telegram to Harvard University, where Charles Best is a guest of the great American diabetologist, Elliot Jocelyn. Banting, address, excuse me, uh, Best addresses the, the crowd of the Harvard community and receives a standing ovation. And when the clapping stops, Dr. Jocelyn stands up and says, Charlie, you have to read this telegram aloud. And it was from Dr. Banting himself. Charlie, if Hurt Nobel Committee won't recognize you, to you I ascribe half my prize money, Fred. So Banting, this great man, for the discovery of insulin is now has a status elevated within the public's mind anyways because it's giving half his prize money away to his graduate student. Professor McLeod uh, a few days later would give half of his prize money to uh, Dr. Call, the fourth man of the team, sort of the forgotten man in this story, the man who purifies insulin for human use. It's a little less generous way. Uh, McLeod is quote saying, I've spoken with Dr. Kolb. He's agreed to give, uh, to take half my money. So you see this distinction between the two and it, the politicking begins. And this is where the banting and best story begins around the discovery of insulin. The Nobel Committee itself is stuck because you can only give a Nobel Prize to three people and you can only give the prize to someone who's been nominated. And so no one nominates Best because he's a graduate student. No one nominates Collip because he's known for purifying insulin. And so you get two for Banting, one for McLeod, and a joint Banting and McLeod. They, in fact, try to give it to McLeod first when the subcommittee comes through to the, the case is made. And then the discussion hinges around, well, you know, this Banting guy was there from start to finish. It was his idea. Are we sure we have it? And so the committee goes back and again reviews all the literature and what have you and then they come back you know in my mind it's the you know we've seen the error of our ways and you should go to go to banting and at which point the committee says yes but you know it was McLeod who had the lab space it was McLeod who showed banting how to operate on a dog it was McLeod who suggested switching from the saline solution to an alcohol solution and it was McLeod who had the club to bring this call up on board and it was around this period of the discussions that August Crow, the 1921 Nobel Prize winner and later founder of what is now Novo Nordisk, uh, said find a way to give it to them both. And, and the, the wording is fantastic. As we have here in the display, the professorial staff of the Caroline Institute has considered the work of Banting and McLeod to be of such importance theoretically. So that covers McLeod's 40 years of carbohydrate metabolism and this body of work that, and expertise that he's built and practically, Banting being the guy to help bring it from the beaker to the bedside, that it is resolved toward them the great distinction of the Nobel Prize. They don't go to the Nobel ceremony together. In fact, they don't go until 1925, and they have to have two ceremonies because the two of them uh, would, uh, at all opportunities, refuse to be in the same room together.